Welcome back. You're with The Playlist. The rich history of Indian music spans centuries. It's as diverse and varied as the country itself. Classical, folk, Hindustani, and Punjabi music have all inspired countless Western musicians, people like Miles Davis, The Beatles, and The Stones, many of whom have made musical pilgrimages to the subcontinent. And the journey continues now with a new generation of bands like Canada's Delhi to Dublin, radically pairing sitar-based melodies with even more unlikely styles such as Celtic folk. On the surface, Indo-Celt may seem an unlikely match, but dig just a little bit deeper and you'll find they have more in common than you might expect. Now on the playlist, the energetic and unexpected music of Delhi to Dublin. Take the sound of one culture, the music of one country. Mix it with another. And what do you get? For Delhi to Dublin, it all began when a Canadian Indian musician was invited to play at a Celtic festival on Canada's west coast. I had no idea that there was any possible connection between the two kinds of music. I just knew that I knew how to play Indian music and that it was a Celtic festival, so I better put Irish music into it. And when we put it together, I think the crowd response was so insane, so over the top, that we were like, whoa, we stumbled onto something here. And I'm not a historian, right? I'm a musician, so we're just doing what feels good to us. But it turns out that they're, the reason that the two kinds of music work so well together is just that, like, because uh, they're the same root, you know, they come from the same place. Celtic folk and Indian music works perfectly for two reasons. Number one is, is you actually have a musical language that can speak to each other. You have Celtic string instruments that speak to a long tradition of the sitar. And secondly, with Celtic music and Indian music, you have this shared political heritage. They were both uh, taken over by the British. They were both speaking this kind of anti-colonial third world language. I think it, it almost felt like uh, on that one moment, the first show, they were responding to the feeling, you know, like when there's two long lost lovers that come together and you know, you're watching a movie and everyone can feel that like, you know, they're finally coming back together after, you know, being separated or something. That's what it felt like. It felt like these two things met and everyone could feel the magic. <laughs> India's tabla and sitar with Western sounds has been happening for a while. In the 90s, the UK's Asian population pushed Bangra-flavored jazz, club music, and electronica into the mainstream. What I was doing was really radical at that time. I was mixing a lot of different musical experiences and, and boxes and genres and styles all into one. There was this melting pot happening, there was a mashup happening which was like unheard of. Talvin was like a tidal wave of energy and new music when he first started. He would bring in classical tabla playing, and you go, well, I've heard this. And then he'd put it through laptops, put it through all these phases, and it must have been like the first time Hendrix 
came onto stage and started literally playing with feedback. It was like, whoa, what is that sound? That's amazing. The other name most often associated with the breakthrough of Indian music into the West is Nitin Sani. I look at all different forms of music as a palette from which you, you, you kind of draw ideas and, and paint emotional pictures, and that's the way it works for me. Time standing still. Indian classical music does tap into, you know, into moods like no other music that I've ever heard. The global music scene is connecting artists, allowing diverse styles to come together and experiment. Delhi to Dublin embodies the 21st century sound of fusion. It's an accidental cultural collision that crosses boundaries and appeals to people who come from neither culture. There's a very objective way of looking at music and philosophy and ideas that, that the West has, whereas Indian classical music comes from a tradition that's much more subjective and about feeling and intuition and instinct. And I think um, when the two converge, there's something very new and exciting that emerges. It's like everything is just global music. And I guess we're, even though we're not easily categorizable into the old definitions of music, like world music, indie rock, you know, whatever, we're sort of falling into this new categorization. I think in the future, when it comes to fusion music, you're going to have maybe 18 to 20 different types of music on one track. And before anyone says that's going to be an unbearable noise, no, it won't, because the key to music is that it's universal. The music of Talvin Singh in Delhi to Dublin on the playlist. That item's up on the website as well. The playlist team is on the road finding more musical fusions for you. Here's a sneak preview of what we've got in store later on in the series. We'll be taking you to Tokyo to sample Japan's underground sounds of rock, pop, and a little Nintendo soundtrack thrown in for fun. music and motion graphics of Omodaka. And our Japanese travels will also take us to shamisen rock stars, the Yoshida Brothers. The new sounds coming out of Japan on the plate. That's what's still to come on the series, but some of our best stories have come from the likes of you, so let us know which musical fusions you think we should be looking at. Email us at playlist at aljazeera.net. That's how you can get with the program. We'll leave you this week with more Palestinian rap from Dam, and we'll see you next time on the playlist on Al Jazeera. <laughs> Flow like this.